Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord. We remember his death and resurrection by hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries. We are confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Let us now listen attentively to the word of God, recalling how God saved God's people throughout history and in the fullness of time sent the Son to be our Redeemer. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Then Moses stretched out his hands over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. God said, I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God." A reading from the letter to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be, re be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, 
Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell Jesus' disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of Christ. From the beginning of life as we know it, through the millennia until today, faith teaches us that God is present in a myriad of ways. In the stories of the Bible, we learn that God creates, God transforms, God delivers, and God establishes. We learn that God unites us in new and significant ways, and that God heralds a new dawn, new life, and new possibilities through the life, death, and resurrection of the one who came as God with us. Story after story gives us glimpses of what God is doing in our world and invites us to ponder how we are called to respond. Story after story gives us glimpses of what God is doing in our world and invites us to ponder how we are called to respond. The Bible was never meant to be some chronicle of a hero's work in the world. It was never intended to be a monologue where God speaks and we simply listen. The Bible is a dialogue, an ongoing conversation in the relationship between God and humanity. Thus, with every story, every moment, every day, human beings are given the opportunity to consider the choices we make in light of what God has done, is doing, and will do. Story after story gives us glimpses of what God is doing in our world and invites us to ponder how we are called to respond. When we remember that God created the world and all that is therein, how does this affect our relationship with all created things? When we see a rainbow in the sky, do we remember God's covenant with the earth? As the Jewish community celebrates Passover, are we open to seeing how the community was transformed by their journey from slavery into the promised land? What does it mean for us when we hear that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? How does this relationship influence our understanding of what it means to live out our baptismal covenant. When we proclaim Christ is risen indeed, how does the use of the present tense remind us that new life exists today? The Bible is a dialogue 
and ongoing conversation in the relationship between God and humanity. We continue this conversation in our worship, our sacraments, and the ways in which we live as the body of Christ, the church in our world. This conversation happens in our buildings, in our ministries, in our homes, and in our hearts. No matter what our circumstances may be, we are never without an option to respond to what God has done, is doing, and will do. May this fire tonight remind us of the sparks God has placed in our hearts in the hope that we will choose to allow these sparks to grow and transform us in new and meaningful ways. With a longing to respond, let us pray through the transformed words of our Lenten song, Christ, be our light. <laughs>